Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Docker and Kubernetes. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you explain the benefits of Docker and how Kubernetes fits into all of this? And the short answer is Docker gives you a consistent interface for all applications and Kubernetes allows you to manage very large amounts of Docker images or Docker containers so that you don't have to do all that manually, basically. What does all of this mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. So Docker is just a way for you to package a application or a computation of some sort. It doesn't actually have to be a web server, but let's for the simplicity of all this, uh, all of this, just say that that is what you're doing. So you can think of Docker as a, a box. So if you think about that, if I have a box and all I need to know about that box is how to, well, at least there's an application inside of the box, right? But all I need to know about the box is how to start and stop that box. I trust that whatever is in this box is working correctly. Then I can package my application in such a way that it fits into this box and then the person who wants to use my application can just know how to start and stop this box. And I have on the inside made sure that I have all the things that my application needs to run. Because if you think about it, if you today, you wanna go to say GitHub and you have some product you wanna download and you wanna try it out, there's a server and stuff like that, then you need to read through all that documentation, you might need to install some dependencies, let's say that's, let's say for the sake of arguments and it is a Node project. All right, so now you need to download Node to your computer, you need to install that, and then you need to probably install NPM as well and then you need to clone this repository, read through all of the descriptions, and then so you know which command to start. But before you do that, you need to install all of the packages and libraries and dependencies that this thing has. Hopefully you have the li right binary libraries if there's anything like that going on. And then you need to start the thing and then you might need to do some compilation or things of this nature. So there's a lot of work involved in setting up somebody else's project. But if they have created a Docker image or a Docker file, all you have to do is to just pull down that, that Docker image and run that container or, or, put, or start up this box. Because, and then all of the things that I just described are happening inside of the box in the container. And it's all just magic, you know, it starts automatically. It, you don't have to do any setup or anything like that. And when you're done with the box, you can just dis delete that box in the same way for every single language, for every single application type, all of it. It's all just abstracted. And all of those dependencies and all that stuff is gonna be gone. But if you install it on your local computer, you're gonna have to uninstall Node, uninstall NPM, uninstall all of the different packages and then remove the code, right? So by using Docker, you actually gain the ability to package any application, it doesn't matter what language or what framework you're using, it's always the same experience for the person who wants to run the application. So it's just a way to package something. You can, re as I said, like really think about it as just taking your application, putting it in a box, and then any, you give that box to whoever wants to use it, and all they need to know is how to, you, how to work with the box. They don't have to know how the application inside works. Now, that is the basics of what Docker gives us, which is a very nice thing when you want to work with different you know, applications. If you have, let's say that you have a database and you have an, a web application of some sort and then you want to run all of that, instead of having to, as I said, ins go into like a environment where you're going to, run, going to run your application and install all this manually, all you have to have to do is to make sure that Docker is, is installed on that environment and then you go to a repository or you download it through Docker CLI if you have that installed as well and you just run the run command. Some people use Docker Compose for this which is a very nice tool as well which is just Docker Compose just allows you to orchestrate on a very low level. All right so I want to run this database box or container together with this web application container and I want those two to be connected and then you simply run that and it's just a configuration file usually, a YAML file that has some configs that says that set this up together and then you run one command 
and both of these boxes are up and running together and that's your entire application. So it's a much smoother experience for people who want to just run application and deploy things and upgrade. And if let's say for the sake of argument that oh you make some upgrade to your code and you want to redeploy something well then you can very easily with docker go and say okay download the latest version of my container because you version containers so you don't just replace the code inside of the container you simply create another container with the updated code so you have one version of, of this container or this box that uses the old code and one that uses the new code and then you can use docker to just switch them out so you start up the new container with the new code people start using that and then you can just pull down and remove or throw away the old container or you can keep it around as well so if you if you for some reason have a problem with the new container you can always roll back and like immediately start up the old container again so at least people can use the old version of your application now kubernetes is a bit of a different beast. So what I was describing earlier was to use something like Docker Compose in order to manage two different containers, one with the database and one with the web application. And for most people who run small side projects and things of this nature, this is absolutely fine and will do the job just, just perfectly. However, if you have, let's say, something like microservices, or you have quite a lot of different services, in a large-scale application, you might have at least a dozen containers, maybe even hundreds. It, at the size of Google, they have thousands of these containers. As you can imagine, if you're going to deal with all of that through like just sitting there and running commands by yourself on every box, or so like just a small set, set of boxes with uh, with Docker Composer, just Docker. That's gonna be a lot of manual hours. So Kubernetes, what that gives you is, you can think of it as Docker Compose, this way of configuring how different containers will work with each other. You can think of it as a super powerful version of doing exactly that. All Kubernetes in essence is, is a tool, is a, it's a command line tool that allows you to set up a set of configurations that express different things about how you want all of these containers to work. So an example would be that you could set up a configuration that says that, oh, I always want there to be two versions of containers running of my web application because if one goes, if one crashes, I still want traffic to be able to go to the other one or maybe three or five or 10, I don't know. I just set up this amount of containers so that I'm always sure that my application is available even if something crashes. Or you might say stuff like, okay, I will always want to make sure that uh, the, the database here is going to start up before I start up my, uh, my web application because it's kind of weird if the web application starts first and then the database starts, there might be some connection problems as an example. Like you want the database to be there before the application starts. And then you might want to say stuff like, oh, I have this, this scheduled job that runs every night, like I dispatch emails or something like that. I want to set up a, 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 a cron job that will run at a given interval. So it will start up this container here and that will just run like whatever logic is inside of that box. I, and I don't have to care about that. And when the job has run or it might usually, it usually is emails dispatching or doing some type of order placing or stuff of this nature, then once that's done, let, just delete and remove the box. And then you can, of course, express things like, oh, I want this box to be able to talk to that box, but I don't want it to be able to talk to that box because they shouldn't be able to communicate because that's a security risk or things of this nature. And then you can say things like, okay, I have different storages on my cloud in this example. I want to connect that hard drive to that container so that everything that is saved in this container is stored on that hard drive and so forth and so forth. So that is in essence what Kubernetes just lets you do. It lets you just configure how all the containers are going to work together and how many of them are going to be available. What should they do if they crash? You can do many things. You can say, all right, I can say that if my container crashes, let, just let it be die, like be dead. Don't try to restart it. But the normal thing is that, oh, right, if it crashes, just try to restart it. That is what Kubernetes lets you do. So what I want you to take away from this is that Docker is just a way for you 
to take your application, put it in a box and give it to whoever, like even if it's just yourself, and give it to someone so they don't have to care so much about how all of your application works because they don't really care about that. They just want the server usually to start and then they want to be able to stop it and so forth and redeploy new versions of your application. As long as it's in that box, you can think of it as a as the postal system. The postman doesn't want to know and doesn't need to know what's inside of your package. They just need to, to make sure that you have your stuff in, a, in an easy to carry box and that they know where it's going. It's the same principle. Starting and stopping and upgrading these containers. That is what Docker gives you. Kubernetes lets you orchestrate and schedule and manage large amounts of these boxes. If you're just using one or two, just using Docker or Docker Compose is fine. But if you have dozens or maybe hundreds, if you're doing something big with the cloud, Kubernetes is definitely a very nice thing to have because then usually you need to, add, you need to express very advanced things how, such as how does these boxes talk to each other, how many are going to run, what's going to happen if something crashes, is there something that needs to happen on a schedule, things of this nature. That is what Kubernetes is going to give you. So if you're doing professional grade software development for a real company that need a, a fairly sophisticated level of infrastructure, Kubernetes is a very, very useful thing. Docker is useful, I would say, for pretty much anybody who wants to do application development and give, have a very convenient way of starting and stopping and upgrading applications just in general. Have a great day.